That guy was sane beyond a reasonable doubt. Mr. Holmes was insane. That's the verdict that I am asking you to render. That's the right verdict, in my opinion. That's the verdict that the evidence points to. Right now, the defense has made its final argument to the jury, saying that the Aurora Theater shooter was insane when he shot and killed 12 people in July of 2012. This is a live look inside the Arapahoe County courtroom, where after three years, this case will be coming to an end soon. Right now, District Attorney George Brockler is rebutting the defense's case. You see him there in the middle. The DA has 25 minutes to argue his side one more time that the shooter was actually seen under Colorado law. And once he's finished, then it's up to the jury. We have team coverage of this major milestone in the theater shooting case. 7 News reporter Mark Stewart has been in the courtroom all day. 7 News investigator Teresa Marchetta has also been listening in. First, we start with Mark. And Mark, you've been in court for several hours. Can you tell us what you've seen while these arguments were made? You know, Eric, because the courtroom is so small, we're able to get a pretty good look at the jurors' faces. And when I left late this afternoon, they looked worn out, they looked exhausted, you could even say sleepy. And who could blame them? This morning, they heard some very technical legal testimony when instructions were read. And then this afternoon, they heard some very emotional stories. They saw some key pieces of evidence, including theater seats where there were bullet holes in them. And then there are the families, the families who lost loved ones, whose brothers and sisters were severely injured, were sitting just footsteps away from them. Jessica Gawi's mother was there. She's been there really through this whole trial. She was visibly upset, but also extended her hand, uh, often trying to hug and comfort other family members of other victims uh, to try to try to make them feel okay during this really difficult time. I was also struck by Michaela Medic's grandmother. She's been sitting up pretty close. Soon as a slide was put on the television screen uh, showing the inside of the theater, she too was moved to tears. So a pretty heavy duty day emotionally for everyone involved, for the jury and for the family members. It's something that the prosecutors and the district attorney certainly have to keep in mind as they make their final arguments. Uh, my colleague Marshall Zellinger is inside right now. We'll be curious to hear his observations uh, when he joins us for 7 News at 10. For now, live in Centennial, Mark Stewart, 7 News. Yeah, certainly a lot to take in today. And let's get now to 7 News investigator Teresa Marchetta, who, like many of you, has been keeping a close eye on our live stream directly from the courtroom. And Teresa, both sides have heavily argued the different diagnosis numerous doctors have given the shooter. Yeah, that's true. In fact, the prosecution went after the defense expert witnesses, not only on the stand, but also in closing. District Attorney George Brockler pointing out none are professionally or forensically certified. All worked exclusively in defense cases. Brockler listed several mental disorders, including schizophrenia and psychosis, pointing out that alone is not enough to be declared insane under Colorado law. Defense attorney Dan King honing in on reasonable doubt, telling the jury the shooter only gets one chance, and if anything they've heard causes them to hesitate, that qualifies as reasonable doubt. He asked the jury directly for a verdict of insanity. All of the experts have said that Mr. Holmes is very seriously mentally ill. What will tell us is behavior. We can also look at changes. And what you know from every single person that has come up here and testified from CU, his girlfriend, his friends, Drs. Fenton, Drs. Feinstein, anybody that saw him over that year plus period before he committed this horrible act, they've all said the same thing. Guy was exactly the same at the end as he was at the beginning. Who says so? Everybody. This is not the same guy. Mr. Brockler keeps talking about he was the same guy. Well, yeah, he's the same guy. He's James Holmes. He's just the same guy who's now in the throes of a psychotic breakdown. And right now, as you saw live just moments ago, District Attorney George Brockler getting the last word here, a 25-minute, 30-second rebuttal to the defense's closing arguments. The judge asking the jury to stay a little late to get it all done today. And within the hour, the fate of the shooter will be in their hands. I'm 7 News investigator Teresa Marchetta. All right, thanks a lot, Teresa. And court is still in session. Another live look at the courtroom. The DA's rebuttal should be wrapping up here any minute now. The jurors will likely begin their deliberations tomorrow. They're charged to determine if the prosecution has proved 
prove the defendant was legally sane at the time of the shooting. It's unclear how long it will take for the jury to reach a verdict, but when they do, we will alert you. When a jury comes back with a verdict, we'll be first to let you know. So sign up to get breaking news alerts on your phone via our 7 News app. It's important to keep these faces in our minds as this trial comes to an end. Monday marks three years since the shooting inside that Aurora theater when these 12 people lost their lives. This Monday, a group of Aurora pastors holding a prayer vigil on the Aurora Municipal Building Great Lawn area. It starts at 7 p.m. on Monday night.